Hello and welcome along to Off The Court, your weekly guide to all things of Vitality Netball Super League in the company of me, Caroline Barker, and her squeaky bottom time as <laughs> in Greenway. Uh, I say squeaky bottom because just two spots remain. Two spots in the top four after Thunder secured their home semi-final. We already knew they'd be top four. And defending champions Lightning joined them by cementing their place in finals weekend. Plenty to get through this week, Tamsin, but four rounds of the season to go. For some, it's a few more. And two are already there. Are they so much better than everyone else? If so, why? Well, well, yes, they are. Those two at the top are, are better than everyone else this season. I think it's not only about the seven they can throw out on court. It's about their impact changes as well. There's not many teams that would survive, have love for a survive with not having Mary Chollock. And then... Ella Clark just absolutely thriving in that goal shooter position. Um, Thunder are a different class, but I think it's just that range of internationals they've got across the court and just how good they are on the ball. And it's just meant that when the youngsters have stepped in, they're just slotting into this seamless structure at the moment. So yet they are better than everybody else. So you know what? This race for the top four is going to be interesting because whoever gets in there has then got to face one of these top two when it comes to semifinals. And that is going to be a huge task. Love it. This season is brought to you by the word adaptability, I think, and those two in particular have shown that they can do that. Right, coming up, we'll talk top four as we hear from Mavericks and those that have been there and done that before, Wasps. We'll also speak about England's future Super League stars. Here are the results from the weekend then. Uh, round 16, but it could have been round one, two, ten in there as well because we had three huge rearranged fixtures. Thunder still doing Thunder things, big win over Bath, and we celebrated a huge debut for Ruby Parker, seeing her with that opening goal too. Brilliant. Uh, Loughborough and Thunder then joined in the top four spots. That's confirmed. Loughborough Lightning with their win over Saracens and Mavericks. A third win of the season for seven stars, coming back from defeat to Pulse to win at Sirens. And it means your table looks a little something like this. Thunder and Lightning, Pulse, little healthy gap on Mavericks in fifth. Bath still there, of course, hovering around. Storm still believe they can make top four as well. So they'll rattle them. Rhinos and Wasps making up the top eight. But Sirens, Dragons and Stars, oh, they can all still make fast five. We'll look at the top four then. One of the key games, and it was a, a rearranged one, Team Bath taking on Saracens Mavericks. Bath won. They'd go on to lose to Manchester Thunder on Monday. Then Mavericks would lose, uh, lose to, to Lightning. So obviously that, that key game on Friday took a lot out of them. In a moment, we'll hear from the Mavericks camp. But, but Tamsin, is this a case of what we've seen from Mavericks before? Where's the consistency? You know what? No. I don't think it is. I think we're seeing a very different Maverick side and I think they've grown hugely in their consistency and how they de de deliver and develop through games. There is a point in every Maverick season where you go, oh God, if they just got over the line in that one, it would have looked very different. Um, I did kind of have that thought when I saw the result. However, going back and watching the game, for long periods of that match, they were totally in control and actually they're now... Um, using that a right amount of flair in the, in the key moments. The way in the nature that they lost in the last few minutes, bearing in mind there were still four up with five minutes to go, they ended up losing that last quarter, 14-9. I think looking at some of the errors there, it was more uh, almost trying to play too safe and making you know uncharacteristic decisions at those crucial times. I think they'll learn a huge amount from that. I'm really hoping it still goes down to the last game of the season and we see them take on Bath and it's going to be whoever wins. But I think Mavericks will have got so much from that game as long as they put it into good use, as long as they understand that actually sometimes they've just got to let a bit more ball go and they can open up that flair again. I think we're in for a really exciting end of run. Uh, I can't wait for Bath Mavericks, the sequel, but the first <laughs> one uh, almost doesn't need a remake. Let's have a look at that, that one goal win on Friday then. Okay, so we're going to have a look at the centre pass here and look how controlled Betha Dale is. And she has been misconsistent for this team, playing the ball around and seeing Sasha Corbin open up that space. And look at this, absolutely no fear, over the top of Mwani into Britt Clark, who shot 26 goals. She was solid in the circle for them. Of course, still no venter. We're going to pick up here with the next centre pass. Kadeen Corbin taking the hit and look at them calmly just putting the ball down. This is all last quarter vibes. They are in control of this game. Look at Sasha Corbin pointing here to Kudel. The offer out from Kadeen. And this, Sasha ended up on 22 feeds. Look at this. And what I love most is a double fist point. Yes, she nailed it. 
after that feed went in. And you're just thinking, this is it. Mavericks are going to take this game away. If we go to this final here, look, just look at the difference. They take the hit again on this first base centre pass, Bath having to throw everything on it. But this is, for me, what's important. Sasha Corbin missing this feed into Brick Clark. I'm not sure why she doesn't let it go. They play it around. Kadeen Corbin again could have put it in, doesn't. And they give Bath an opportunity to win it. They don't get it. But just this kind of fear of letting ball go instead of playing that swing around. And Sasha Kadeen was on 23 uh, shots in this game. She plays that ball over the top and it was intercepted. And that kind of was game over. Well, Mavericks assistant coach Camilla Buchanan joins us. Camilla, a tiring weekend, I guess, mentally, physically. As a group, how have you talked about how this leaves you now into that top four? Um, well, yeah, it's not a position we've not been in before. So, <laughs> um, so you know, we're, we're a really resilient bunch. We're very realistic for ourselves. We know that it is still within our grasp. We like to go th about things um, the hard way. That seems the Mavericks way. Um, so, you know, our our focus is very much on, you know, the games that really count. Every game has counted for us so far. That's the, just the reality of where we put ourselves. Uh, but we, you know, we looked at sirens now at the weekend. Um, we've obviously got uh, Thunder again in a couple of weeks. So, um, you know, we're very realistic. It's not the position we wanted to be in. You know, we started off... Um, on a much better foot this season and we felt as though the momentum was with us. We hit a couple of blocks um, as every team has um, and we've just not dealt with it as good as we'd like to. Um, but, you know, in the face of adversity, this is a bunch that you want to be with because they can rise to it. I, I say that knowing full well our history and that we haven't at all, you know, for the last few seasons. Um, however, you just see this group so, so tight-knit um, and genuinely are in together. So I feel as though, yes, we've talked about it before. We've talked about not getting over that final hurdle. Um, if there is any group of people that you want to be group to, to go back. Well, I, I want to pick up on that because I think the start of the year I asked about top four contenders and I was like, for Mavericks, it's all about the big C, the big consistency. And I think you, you've obviously heard it, you work in the media and everyone kind of talks around it, but no one's really come to you guys. I think you've finally sort of cracked it to a point this season. I think Beth in the middle has helped hugely in sort of that control and calmness. I've seen the Corbins play one of the best seasons I've seen them do for, for a few years. I think they've been outstanding for you guys. Britt coming in and doing a great job while Bent has been injured. But Bath, it just kind of crept in for like 50 minutes. It was incredible. I think you shut down the defence, you'd uh, their attacking end with your defence, you'd opened up their defence end. Is that something you guys will focus on? Is it something you just kind of brushed under the carpet? Or is there some kind of structures you can put in place for the, the last few rounds to go, right, we are so close to this, but how do we get across the line? Well, I think you're on the money. You know, you talk about us not getting over the line for the last few seasons, but the, the issues that we've had have been different to this season. And I do feel as though the um, those issues have change now um i think the i agree the consistency that we've got across the board um is a lot better we've got um key people stepping up this season um and we've found um a style that works for us um and we've had some questions asked of ourselves um you know in the last few games in the last few rounds um and yeah like you said 50 minutes of that game um you know we found ourselves up we were we weren't comfortable but we know to go toe to toe with bath um and the the issues that we found ourselves having to face aren't ones that we particularly had to deal with before so we are totally going to home in on those um you know we we're, we're still going to build we've got Inna Marie to you know uh, that's going to be coming into the mix um not to take anything away from Brick Clark who's been in my opinion outstanding um this season um so you know we've still got strength uh, to add to the group um but for me it's you know they are they are doing the things that we've asked them to do, um, you know, a lot more than they ever have done. And it is just about those final tweaks that I think, you know, I don't I don't think we're ever going to be that team that wins by 20, 30 goals for some reason. Don't know what it is. <laughs> we absolutely have the capability, but I just think we like the drama. It must be that. Um, so, yeah, we are going to totally home in on those things and and, and they're fixable. Well, I love it because you're keeping it interesting for us because I'm praying it goes down. I know you're not, but to the last game of the season when you face Bath so you can get your revenge. And I think you touched on it there. Almost with some of this, it's about the experience. It's about going through it. 
And I just want to ask you quickly, there are two coaching jobs coming up at the end of the season. And, and I know you do a fine job as assistant coach at Mavericks, but I also know you've got an incredible netball brain and you'd also, you're hugely important in that culture at Mavericks. Head coaching for you at some point, fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, do you know what? Um, it's, I love this club. Saracens Mavericks is, um, you know, I've been, I'm, I'm like wallpaper now. I've been, <laughs> um, and, you know, the, the focus is very much on getting through this season um, and, you know, getting this bunch of players over the line. You know, in terms of what the future holds, um, who knows? I mean, you know, head coach is something um, we, we'd all love to do. Um, it's certainly something that is, um, you know, potentially in the pipelines in the future but for me these sorts of things are about timing you know um I've got a young family um that you know there you go <laughs> that um right on cue Casey um yeah so I think for me it's about timing um you know right time right place um potentially but you know this season's very much focused on Mavs I think maybe you need Casey in as your assistant and that would work uh, just just finally before we let you go before Casey lets you go we'll get him to hang up Looking at those then, Sirens, Storm, Thunder, Rhinos, Bath. Have you done the old workout? How many we need from that? What we're going to focus on? Or is it just the old coach's cliche, one game at a time? Uh, someone's done that. I'm not a numbers person. Someone's done that in the back. We are still in contention. So we know uh, that it, you know, it's still possible. Yes. Yeah, on a few other results as well. Um, yes, that is certainly in the background. You can't deny the fact. You know, we, ha we have to know what we're, what we're aiming for. Um, but the reality is that, unfortunately, with our uh, with our history and with our background, we don't have it in control. Okay, well, we can nail this game and then we'll nail this game. We so that's why we do have to take it one game at a time. So um, we will be doing that. Our, our attention is very much on sirens um, this weekend, um, and um, let's go from there. Camilla, as always, a delight. Um, Casey wants you as coach as well. Go coach, Camilla. Yeah, exactly that. See, see. Uh, thank you, Camilla. Next up, back-to-back -back wins for Wasps. Light up the top eight and we'll talk that race for the Fast Five. Okay, a huge win for Stars in their, in their hopes to make top eight. And that spot is currently occupied by your former side, Champions Wasps, as was. Um, we'll talk to Mel Mansfield in a bit. But have you seen a change in how Wasps are now managing things, given that it's, it's been a very different start to the season for them. Yeah, it has. And, and you know, as a, as a Wasp fan, it's a little frustrating at times watching sort of, uh, you know, probably how they started. But getting to this point now, more consistency in their lineup. I think they've found positions. You know, they've um, experimented with that centre position. I think giving Leah Goss the opportunity to be out there now and to sort of cement that position and let her learn as she goes through the game. I think we've seen a real change between that Christian and Rachel Dunn connection. Um, Lucy Paris has really grown as well. It, it's kind of um, hopeful to watch them, you know. It, it, at the start of the season, it was a bit like, where is this going? And now I feel like Man Mel Mansfield has got complete control of this group. She's got a real buy-in from them. We're seeing a real shift in that confidence. You know, it was a big win against Surrey Storm. They rode the penalties. The penalty count was 69, and yet they took those hits, something that would make um, Was crumble in the past. So, yeah, really pleased with how they're shifting along. Um, and, you know, you have to remember, when Mel steps away at the end of the season, if they retain some of those players, that's a great foundation they've just built for some of those youngsters to then add and build and step up again. Well, something never changes, and that's Wasp Storm is always a tasty affair. So it's not often Proscovia's piece is kept to the second best shooter on the court, but just watch this passage of play with Ella Powell Davis. This is her and Josie Hocker working together. Look at her come in and win that ball and attack in contact. Eight turnovers between them. They really upset the Storm attacking end, and especially that feed. This is them then on the centre pass, a beautiful second phase into Iona Christian. Just keep your eyes on Lucy Fries, who feeds that over to Rachel Dunn. She ended up with 45 goals, player of the match, and finally she was holding in the circle because of the work rate out the front. And finally, this centre pass, look at that ball from Christian. She ended up on 25 feeds, taking the hit, but keep your eyes on Leah Goss. This is the experience that she's gaining every single week. Mickey Austin, known for her physicality on the edge, she comes off, Gets to the top and plays Paris in. Paris ending on 23 shots herself. A superb performance from Wasp. Well, Wasp coach Mel Mansfield joins us now. First back-to-back -back wins of the season. The 100 up for you, Mel. How was it for you? 
Oh, it was really good. It was just so enjoyable to see 60 minutes of netball from the girls. And I think we really enjoyed just preparing for one game. Um, and with this group, that's been really important. I think where we've struggled is back-to-back -back games in terms of our experience. So we did a whole week of how to turn the ball over against their attacking unit and it paid dividends and really helped us. We haven't actually talked to you since the announcement that you're going at the end of the season. That reaction from the team, those two back-to-back -back wins, I would say that they're, they're trying to win it for you now. Yeah, it's sweet. I've had some really nice messages from the players, actually, since the game on Sunday to say, come on, let's let's really finish in style and as high as we can get. And um, I hope they're doing it for themselves. I was going to give my all anyway for the last remaining games, and I know they were, but I think now they have some belief. And actually, mathematically, we can actually get seven now. So... Um, it's all to play for and they've got some belief now and we've really found some form in the last couple of games. So I'm really excited to see what the next four bring. I wanted to pick up about the squad, Mel, because clearly it's been a bit of a different year for Wasps and particularly for you as well. You know, I, I don't think you've, you've been in groups that haven't made finals. But we've been talking on the show the last few weeks about sort of the level of turnovers in, in our Super League at the moment and also how developing young players, how coaches have to manage that role as well. It's not just about having an Ellie Cardwell and giving her a new tactic. We've seen how well players like Lucy Paris, um, Leah Goss have all come on this season. How has that tweaked your training? I know you've had um, a lot of experience. You've, you've been really successful with the Uni of Hearts team. They won a books again this year. But have you had to look at training differently? Have you had to look at how to upskill these players as well as the tactical elements? Yeah, it's taken time and I think we always knew that. And, you know, I've said to you on many occasions, it's a harder job this year because when you've got players that have got loads and loads of tools in their locker, tactically things become a lot easier. With this group, we do we do, do a, a technical session um, on a Wednesday morning where we do individual work, but a lot of it is down to experience. And, you know, take someone like Leah, who I've obviously known a long time as a uni player, um, her second game against Jay Clark and against Mickey Austin were a different level. And you can't replicate that experience. They have to feel it. They have to feel it. There's some... In our squad, there's so few players that have played more than the odd 10, 15 minutes. And that's not an excuse. And we've not made an excuse the whole season. But that's why it takes time. Ella Powell Davis, who's pretty, I think she started every game, only played the odd quarter last season. Same with Leah, same with Lucy Paris. Rachel Fee has never played Super League before. Lauren Nichols was a substitute. We're all very well aware of that. Um, and you've got to manage expectations and their own kind of hopes, beliefs, values. And it's difficult. And I'd like to think that's one of the things that I'm good at. Um, I've worked with young players for a long time in that university age group. And, you know, being able to be firm with them, but also put your arm around them and then give them something tactically is all part of my job. And yeah, it's a challenge. It's 24 seven, you're never off duty. And you know, we're just, you know, getting there now with four games to go. But again, we've got to keep our feet on the ground in the last four games. So, yes, they've been hugely successful in the last couple of games, but we now need to follow that up. We've got some real threat games coming up of teams that will be after us. You know, Celtic and Sirens want to beat us and challenge games in terms of Bath and Lightning that we are going to try and upset things. So, yeah, it's been, it's been difficult and... Um, but enjoyable in another sort of way. And if you spoke to somebody like Rachel, she would say she's enjoyed being part of helping them. I was just going to pick up on that. Firstly, you were always better than me at putting the arm around, around the players. <laughs> that, was, that was your job. I'd yell at them, you'd look after them. Um, Mel was great at bringing cups of tea and biscuits as well. She's an absolute genius of getting the squad together. And that's what I wanted to talk about culturally just quickly. You, you mentioned Rachel Dunn in the 20 years that she's been playing I don't think she's ever missed out on a final series how have you managed those expectations with her culturally this year as well it's interesting because I've heard her be interviewed and we've never really directly discussed it but when I've heard her speak to others she's actually quite enjoyed the season and she's enjoyed helping people like Leah Iona you know even Iona up until last season didn't get full games. We had Sophia in the squad and Amy Flanagan. So 
I think Rachel's really enjoyed being part of the solution. And you know what Rachel's like. She's uh, got her own ideas and we have a few battles along the way. Um, (laughs) But, you know, fortunately, as a person, and I'd like to think as a friend, I know her really well. And we've managed managed our way through and she's thoroughly enjoyed playing with Lucy and and with Giselle they both offer something different and she's had some good run outs at goal attack so I think Rachel's managed it brilliantly in terms of managing her own expectations top four was over a long time ago and was probably never really realistic you've always got to go for it but now we've got the bit between our teeth and I want to leave the squad and at least top eight and if we could get seventh that's the same result as last year with arguably a much more experienced squad. Please tell me one of you that Rachel Dunn's not leaving to. Either of you want to make an eye connection? Tamsin? You know, I asked, I asked her the other day at dinner. She would not give me an answer, so we will wait and see. <laughs> oh, I don't know that my little heart could take both of you going away. Um, Dragons away next then. You both know Danny Tipmas morris well from your time at, at Wasps. Just briefly and finally on that, Mel, how much does it warm your heart when you see Wasp players that have, have come through from, from you two, from both your times there, now tearing it up across the league, but also the coaches too? Yeah, it's great, isn't it? It's really great. And um, you know, really great to see Danny in a head coach role. I know that's what she's wanted. Some ex-Wasp players, 21s, that are travelling down to Cardiff. Um, and people move for opportunities and they've had great exposure. So, you know, Long are the days where long gone are the days where players stay in teams now for years and years and years. We've got some that do, but players move for court time and for coaches. And Danny had a huge connection with many of those players through the 21s, and they won the 21s competition twice in her tenure at Wasp. So, yeah, um, we know them well. Um, we've got four sessions this week, and it's all about beating Dragons on Monday. So, looking forward to it, getting into it tonight. Can't wait, can't wait. Mel, as always, thank you. I'm sure we'll catch up with you before you bid farewell. And it will only just be yeah, just for now, won't far. it? We'll I'll be back with Tamsin sure. somewhere, somehow. Fingers you never know. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> Here's hoping, here's hoping. Coming up then, round 17, and England look to the future through the Super League. Off the court, we're whipping around all things Vitality Netball Super League with me, Caroline Barker, and her Tams in Greenway, and the odd appearance from Casey as well. Casey Jacks is going to be a coach of the future, right? Um, <laughs> yes. Tams in, Jess Thelby, England coach, has announced her England Roses for the coming year. First step towards her Commonwealth Games squad, and we're just going to have to halve it. Key things 18 out of the 24 are UK based, and Although there are a lot of players in, there's a couple of key players that aren't, but we could still see at the Commonwealth Games, if that makes sense. Yeah, so uh, six changes in that first 24 group from last season. Probably the big omission is Chelsea Pittman. So she's been as a training partner in FIBA, but we've seen a few appearances already for FIBA. We also saw that cameo at the Giants as well. And by all accounts, has played very 
very, very well and sort of got tongs wagging again about whether she should be brought in. Um, so that was kind of the big one for me that that stood out. Clearly no Serena in there as well. A um, few new names added in, which is really exciting. But yeah, I don't, I don't think by all accounts, as long as the system is working how it usually works, you have to be in the full-time program necessarily to get picked um, in that final 12. They've always had different systems and tiers to go in. So not all players can come and fully commit to the full-time program. And that might be the case for Chelsea. One of the things we don't know ever is who put the hand up, who put the name forward, who wants to be selected and what those conversations have gone like. So never say never, but it was probably the name down the list. That I went, oh, OK, interesting. Can I just get close to the microphone and ask you, do you take Chelsea? If Chelsea wants to go, do you take her? No, I'd take Nat. And I don't think you can take Chelsea and Nat. So that that might be where Thelby's going as well. You can't have two out-and-out wing attacks in a squad. Uh, uh, I said uh, it. Uh, uh, noise. Good. She always gives you an opinion. <laughs> uh, talking of opinions, there's huge representation from Pulse and Tamsin. One of their superstars is who we're going to focus on. So picking this up here in the second quarter, keep your eyes on Fumi. More importantly, keep your eyes on her arm. Look at that hook and take. Doesn't get away with it. Zara Everett just getting a hand in here. Look how annoyed Liana Leota is just turning to the bench like, come on. But it's that kind of hassle that really helps. As she walks away and sets this penalty, just look at Fumi. Bear in mind, she's just got her hands to something. But oh no, look what stars are about to do. They think it looks open again. Paige Reed coming for there. Fumi gets it. Intercept number one. She was outstanding again, bearing in mind this is her first game back. Check out this with her partnership, that five-foot mark off there, allowing Zara Everett to come around because it's not just about her, it's about what she does for the rest of this team. And this is impressive. Off the back line, just watch the arm again, cleanly up in the air, steals that one, makes it look so easy. But more importantly, she is growing with every single game and she's still top of the deflection list, even having a few weeks break. Well, Fumi Fadoju is back and in the England setup to brilliant, brilliant news. Congratulations, Fumi. How does it feel? Tell me all about it. I feel like I'm still just processing it. So right now, um, it's an amazing opportunity. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that all the new half the team of Pulse is in it too, so I'm not alone. It's just a really exciting opportunity to like go into, so can't wait. I don't know if you've met your number one fan, Tamsin Greenway, um, but every week, without doubt, she's got to slip in some mention of you and she's just been analysing you again. Tamsin, I will let you do the whole cheerleader thing for at least, you can have at least three minutes. <laughs> well, firstly, I, I still am in shock that every week people throw the ball into your arms. Now, it, it um, my, I, it's almost like I want to come back out of retirement to see just how good you are because, it, honestly, Boomy, it's incredible. Firstly, you've had... A few weeks off with the injury, you've come back and it was great to see you back on the court. Um, still sitting top of the deflection list, which just goes to show how well you've been playing. I just want to know a little bit about Fumi because you've kind of burst onto the scene. You're this absolute star on court. And I mean, literally everybody's raving about you and rightly so. But has this been the ultimate dream? Is getting into the Roses, is, is seeing them win the gold at the Commonwealth Games in 2018, has this kind of been where you want to go? Or is netball just something you kind of do because you love? Um, I started out like when I was like 13 and at first it was just for fun, all my friends were playing it so I just loved going every single day and as I started to go, go up the league, like I started like county, regional, then going to um, London Pulse, I feel like I got to know more about netball, become more aware about the England team and I started to like idolise them <laughs> and then I was always like oh my god imagine if I was in the England team and next thing you know here I am. <laughs> Yeah, it's a dream for me to actually one day play for them, be a part of the squad. Well, just to let you into a little secret, you're going to be rubbing shoulders with them now. You're going to be every <laughs> single training session, which is mega. Is it true? I'm going to ask you one more question after this, but is it true you went to Storm Trials and didn't get in? Yeah, <laughs> my first ever um, franchise trials. It was quite um, <laughs> interesting. Um, I went to the first, obviously, the first trial and like, I just I didn't play as well as I should have, probably. And then literally a few like two few oh, sorry, a few days afterwards I went to London Porsche trials. Amanda Newton was there. <laughs> she was like, every defender here is I expect better. And I was like, oh my god, I'm not gonna get in. And luckily got through to the next trial and got into it and here I am. <laughs> so yeah. Well, it's fair to say Storm might be kicking themselves just just a, a little bit, but also loads of faith and hope out there for players. I get it all the time. And actually I was one of those players that didn't get picked at first try and and found my path and that kind of leads me on to what a great 
fit pulses for you. We've seen you and three others into the full-time program, thoroughly deserved. We've seen another few into the futures program as well. They're getting something right. And we've heard list goals talk about this kind of family environment. I know it's not just about off the court, but on the court, your partnership with Zara Everett is something that is, is thriving and, and it's kind of benefiting you both. How important is that culture to you, both for the support off and also on the court in terms of getting to play how you want to play? I think it's so important because having these like this kind of relationship with other girls, like I could go with, go talk to them outside of netball, literally any time of the day. I ask them so many questions about university and literally just anything that's going on in my life. And being able to have those conversations is so important because it's easier to have conversations on court. It's easier to talk to each other. We're not scared to say anything we want to say. And it's all just fun. <laughs> it's literally joking all about. Like literally, I can hear them joking downstairs right now. <laughs> it's just a lovely community, and I just love being here. So it's nice to be able to be in the England team with them as well. So it's amazing. Uh, here's hoping that that fun and that joy will continue. I've got no doubt that it will. Is the belief there too with you, Fumi? Do you see this team? Do you look around this squad and think, we're going to make top four? We're going to be there come finals weekend? Definitely. <laughs> and literally, we're all like in this kind of mindset of winning right now. And we all want to say we all want to be in the top four. And we believe that we can do it as well. Literally every conversation I have with the girls, everyone's like, we're going to do it, we're going to do it. And, you know, we have to now, yeah. We hope, so hope, you're going to be in Birmingham on that court. We think yeah. you're the not-so-secret weapon that England needs. But just dare to dream for me. What would it mean to step out on that court in front of those England fans in the Commonwealth Games? I think it would mean so much. I feel like that's kind of my ultimate dream right now, <laughs> to have that opportunity, um... I feel like yes, it'll be no, like it'll be nerve wracking, but overall, like being able to be on that court with everyone, like all my idols, everyone that I looked up to when I was younger, it's like a big dream for me, especially for everyone who supported me so far along my journey. Like to be able to pay them back, like thank you for doing this, and now look at where I am. <laughs> That's a great, it's just a great chance for me, and I really do hope, <laughs> you know, I just hope everything goes long as it does, yeah. Uh, I've got no doubt that your life is going to continue to go up and up and up. One final word from your number one fan, uh, Tamsin Greenway, before we let you go. Tamsin, you think she should be there at the Commonwealth Games. What final pieces of advice do you have for, for Fumi ahead of this? What's going to be a, an incredible next few months? Oh, well, yeah, look, I, I think you're the bit of magic they're needed. Regardless of what happens in the next few months, Fumi is going to be on the stage for a very long time, the World Netball stage. I mean, the world is literally your oyster at the moment. There will be England caps. I'm sure there'll be opportunities overseas as well. And I think that's the beauty of sport, isn't it? You talked about that fun element, that social element, um, but also how it transpires to being life-changing. So I, I think you should be so proud of what you're achieving. You're right at the start. It makes me want to come and play for London Pools when you say, yeah, we want to win and we want to do this. I mean everybody's on that bandwagon we're right behind you and and like I said a huge future ahead regardless of what happens so get in there give it your all and we will all be rooting for you oh thank you so much Tamsin thank all right she never says such kind words to me uh oh. think it's not about me <laughs> Fumi get back to training because I know uh, coach Sam Bird is there listening so go enjoy it I know it's actually a rest weekend for Pulse coming up so while you go and Hopefully, hopefully catch a breather. Here's what else is coming up this weekend. Rhino Storm on Friday, Dragon Stars on Saturday's one that I think is going to be a proper old matchup as well. Tell us a measure of where both those sides are. Sirens, Mavericks, Rhinos, Thunder, Lightning, Bath, Dragons, Wasps. You can tell by the one I sung that Lightning, Bath surely is the game of the weekend. Hams and Greenway? It has to be, doesn't it? You know, this is now, can I say crunch time again? It's crunch time. Okay, we're coming to that final part. Bath Lightning, keep your eyes peeled. Crunch time. The official seal from Tams in Greenway. Is there any greater phrase to level at a team and a game going head to head? If there is, you can let us know. Use the hashtag off the court. If there's anything you'd like to see, talk about, you can get in touch through the usual routes. Thank you for watching. Give us a like if you do like it and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.